Welcome everyone to another observability clinic, another app that we put the spotlight on today. It's the Site Reliability Guardian or SRG. In short, it automates change impact analysis to validate service availability, performance, and capacity objectives as across various systems. And I have the creator mastermind behind that app with me, Johannes Servas. Hi, Servas Andy. <laughs> Hey, uh, Johannes, let's jump right into it. A new app that is available on the hub. Tell us more about the Site Reliability Guardian and why people should install it. Mm -hmm. Sure, let's kick it off. The Site Reliability Guardian is a new app that you find on the Dynatrace platform, and it allows you as a developer and as a platform engineer in order to make sure that you check your releases before they get promoted into production, for example. This is the one use case that we are target on. And the other one is basically checking any change that happened within your environment, whether it has an impact on your uh, SLOs, for example. In details, it allows you to define certain objectives for your services and applications that are critical for you. Most likely they have already service level objectives assigned and you can make use of those in order to check them before they get violated. The Site Reliability Guardian also is designed in order to work with Dynatrace workflows, as I will show you in a minute or two. And it also allows you to go deeper into failed validations by leveraging notebooks. Pretty cool. All right, then I already teased it a little bit, but basically one use case area, the Site Reliability uh, Guardian is covering is all about automating um, release validations. This is also, so to say, the uh, home base we are coming from mm -hmm. because we learned also in the past very well how to integrate release validation into your existing uh, delivery pipelines. This can be a Jenkins on a GitLab Azure pipeline or whatever you have in place. And you use the Guardian in order to implement the quality gate, which basically uh, provides you an answer whether you can release the new version or you stop promoting it and stop the, the, the artifact uh, to get promoted. And the second uh, use case area goes more into the direction of uh, automatically change, um, analyzing changes that happened within your environment. Really think of a situation where you do a deployment in production and you already know that the change happened and you wanna take this event in order to make sure that um, the new change is not impacting any of your SLOs. Mm -hmm. And on that one, I would uh, yeah, elaborate a little bit further because um, think of that screen right now. Here we see Smartscape where we have one one um, service highlighted. In this case, it's the hipster shop uh, front-end service. This is, in this situation, a business critical service, and it's also owned uh, by Dan. And as we can see here in Smartscape, this service has dependencies to other services. But of course, you cannot watch all of the dependencies all the, all the time. But what happens in case uh, an update gets, for example, a triggered, let's say on the service, which has uh, the border uh, around it. Then we wanna have an automation in place, which uh, checks this change and also makes sure that certain objectives that are related to our uh, hipster shop are not violated. And at the end, we would like to get a notification, a notification that informs both, on the one hand, uh, the person who was responsible for the change and also, um, the other person who is impacted by the change that was detected. And if there is um, yeah, an impact uh, also on the new, uh, an impact resulting from the change mm -hmm. that was currently uh, done. Mm -hmm. This is what we think of a uh, change impact analysis, really giving you a way in order to automate um, the observation and also the, the validation of certain objectives whenever there is an event happening within your environment. Very cool. Johannes, uh, just to, to, to recap it, one is you have new builds in your pipeline and you want to validate if the new build is meeting all of your objectives that you have to that build, so the classical quality gate use case. Second thing, 
you are making a change in an environment and you want to make sure that your change doesn't have any negative impact on everybody that is relying on your uh, service that you're responsible for. And then with the automation, we can not only validate it, but we can also inform the right people through the channels that they are uh, watching, Slack, email, Teams, whatever it is, so to make sure that everybody's informed about potential uh, changes that impact them. Totally right. Mm -hmm. Very nice summary. Perfect. But I think now it's time uh, actually to see this now in action. And exactly. let's just jump over to the app. Therefore, I go to the Dynatris. And here uh, you will find the app on the hub. You just open up uh, the Dynatris hub. You search for it. Here it is. Mm -hmm. The entry, uh, you open this hub entry and you get the high level overview of what the app uh, will provide you. And on the top right corner, you find the install button, but in my case, it's already installed. Mm -hmm. And so I can directly open uh, the app. I do so. And what we see uh, right now is an overview of all the guardians we have configured in uh, the site reliability guardian. A guardian itself is what you can, or you can think of a guardian like a quality gate. You can now use one of those components and also integrate it within your pipeline. This is the one use case. And the other one is basically configuring a guardian in order to check changes and also to validate the objectives that are then related to the change. Here we have now uh, eight guardians configured. On such a tile, we see yeah the name of it, then the overall result that was produced or the, what came out from the last validation. In this case, uh, it was basically a failure. Then we can add some tags to the Guardian. And here we see an overview of the objectives and how they were validated within the last uh, validation. One failed in this case and four passed. And the last validation happened two hours ago. Yeah, this was basically uh, the outcome of, of the last execution. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah, before going into more details on, on one particular uh, Guardian, I think it's it's nice to create a new one because it's just a couple of clicks to get a new Guardian configured. As you saw, I just clicked on New Guardian. I give it a name. Let's say we want to create a Guardian for easy travel. I also want to say that this belongs to the stage production. This is now uh, a tag that I add to the Guardian in order to allow me uh, grouping and filtering uh, Guardians. And then uh, further down, we see a section where we can now define objectives that belong to this Guardian. And we want to define an objective based or for the failure rate. And this is now really the beauty. Uh, we can now make use of fetching this data from Grail, and therefore we just define a DQL. And in this case, I am fetching uh, all the logs that uh, relate to uh, easy travel. In my case, yeah, the logs I will find in this um, source. It's underneath project, Dynatrace, the mobility logs requests. And from that source, I get all the logs. I parse the log lines into JSON objects. And then from the object, I derive the HTTP status, which in this case should be in between 400 and 500 to get the failure rate of 400 errors. And when I run this now to get the current um, status on this objective, we see that this number is actually at the moment on a very high with mm -hmm. 37%. And in the future, we want to make sure that this number drops. Um, and therefore, we just define a threshold. And the failure rate, of course, should be as low as possible, meaning that lower is better. I select this option and we set the target on maximum at 10%. And we also want to get a warning when we go up to 8%. And this is also what this um, element on the bottom is showing us. Everything is in a pass range from zero to eight. Between eight and 10, we are in a warning range. 
and all the other uh, values above 10% uh, in the failure rate failure range. This is the the one option um, that you could can define an an objective on, and if you took a close look, there's also a second one because we can also reference SLOs that you maybe already have uh, in Dynatrace configured. And I will do this as well. I create now a second objective for this Guardian. In this case, it's about a mobile app crashes. I now go with the option of uh, using an SLO and it's the mobile it's the SLO about mobile crash crashes on the easy travel app and in this case we don't know exactly um, the the measuring yet hence we just want to use or we we just want to get the information of what the current status is and so we don't uh, define a threshold mm -hmm. i just create this guardian now So while this is saving, that means you can make create multiple objectives. They can be based on anything that we have in Grail, uh, meaning your logs, your uh, your your time series, um, your uh, traces will follow soon. Your events, uh, I think these events is a big topic as well. So you can actually really span it from everything you typically look at when you look at a release and it comes out and you typically have your dashboards where you look at different types of data. You can now specify all of this in the Guardian with thresholds. And then I guess now you can either validate this manually or even through a workflow. Right. I now just click on uh, validate to get the status quo of the objectives. And in a couple of seconds, we should get the result. So basically, this is the time frame you give the time frame. Uh, that means, uh, I guess, every query will be executed uh, based on on that time frame that you give it here. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the outcome is now that we have one failure. And this was the, the failure rate is still uh, too high, and the other one is the info on the on the SLO. Um, yep. Here is what you get then as as an outcome. I don't want to go into details on the new, uh, newly created Guardian, but let's let's just have a look on the on another one. I will select here this uh, Cards Guardian because that one we can see was executed now multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as this uh, timeline is visualizing, and the last executions they were good, they passed, but the other ones uh, were basically failing. And now the important point and uh, and actually also the, the secret sauce behind a guardian is that those executions they were not triggered manually there was a lot of people sitting there hitting the, the validate button that was not the case uh, instead of that we are now leveraging uh, workflows within Dynatrace in order to kick off a validation whenever a certain event is happening or when a Jenkins or a pipeline is triggering the validation also by sending in an event and I would briefly uh, show you this uh, workflow, which is used uh, for this Cards Guardian. We switch over to workflows. It opens up the the, the workflows for the for the card for the Cards Guardian, and that one, as I said before, is basically listening for certain events within Dynatrace, and when an event contains, in this case, uh, the tag service equals cards, then it will kick off the workflow execution. Mm -hmm. And the very first um, task in this execution is the validation of the Guardian. Mm -hmm. And this action itself is also provided by the Site Reliability Guardian app. This you can see by this uh, small little icon, which yeah, represents the, the logo of the SRG. And what we just select there is the Guardian that we would like to execute and the time frame um, to fetch the data from. And in this case, we take the time frame from the event which was triggering uh, this mm -hmm. workflow in order to have you more dynamic uh, yeah, ways of, of selecting the, the data. Mm -hmm. 
which means uh, for clarification, if you let's say have a Jenkins pipeline or GitLab or whatever, and you deploy, maybe you run some tests and then you can basically send an event to Dynatrace say, we just deployed cards in production. And by the way, here's the time frame I would like you to analyze. And you can pass this in as parameters in the event and you can here reference all of the elements in that event that triggered that workflow, which is really nice. Yeah. Correct. And after the validation is done, which then returns a result whether it passed or failed, uh, we then go, along, go around within a smartscape to find services that are depending on the service that we currently validated. Mm -hmm. We get a list of entities. Uh, based on this list, we derive who the owners are. And we also derive um, the contact details, which in our case will be the Slack channel that we use to send out targeted notifications. Mm -hmm. Very powerful and also, uh, mm -hmm. very, very nice um, that we now can also implement such use cases. And when I now execute this workflow by clicking on the run button, which will allow us to send in an event, I hit the button. So this is also great for testing, right? I mean, normally this Perfect. is triggered by an external event that is sent in, but then you can also easily test this query fast, yeah? Perfect. Right, yeah, uh, very convenient uh, because you just take the last event which um, you have applied to the filter mm -hmm. and you're just basically sending it in a second time. As we can see, the validation went through. The outcome was a failure. Mm -hmm. We uh, traversed uh, Smartscape in order to get the entities that might be impacted by this failed validation. We derived the owners and then sent out a Slack notification um, informing the people that there was a failed validation that impacts um, your service. And let's just jump over to Slack where we see that the Help Avengers channel just received uh, the message that there was an a validation happening that have might that failed and impacts your app. And when we follow this link, we get to the details on the validation. And this one was the execution which we get right now. Wow. And yeah, with that <laughs> actually uh we closed the journey mm -hmm. and came back from where we, we started from. Perfect. Johannes, uh, thank you so much. What you've basically shown is the site reliability guardian to validate your deployments, to make sure to validate a potential change impact. So perfectly integrates into workflows to trigger this on demand based on events. The events can be coming from a delivery pipeline. Events could also come from anything else that Dynatrace detects in any environment. Uh, what you also showed in the workflow is ownership capabilities. So folks, if you're not aware of this, we have new ownership capabilities where you can assign ownerships, teams, and information about teams to Dynatrace entities, which you can then also extract. So you can send targeted notifications to the right people that actually own these components that have currently have a problem or where everything is green, then it's also great. Johannes, thank you so much. I think we will do a deep dive, but this, I think, closes the session for the spotlight because the spotlight is really about a quick overview of the new apps that we have. Thank you so much and kudos to the team for building such a great app. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for having me.